that trouble? Well, okay, it's 431. Uh, we'll open the city of Kerrville planning its own commission meeting. Uh, Dorothy, would you call roll, please? Yes, sir. Bob Waller? Here. Garrett Harmon? Here. Trisha Byram? Here. David Jones? Here. Rustin, Rustin Zuber? Here. Jim Brown? Here. Bill Morgan? Here. Thank you. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, number one, Visitor Citizens Forum. Anybody with business not scheduled on the agenda is encouraged to briefly speak. Uh, fill out a speaker request form uh, or just make your way to the podium. State your name and address. Uh, number two is a consent agenda. All items listed below are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted in one motion. No separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or citizen requests, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda considered separately. Item 2A, approval of the minutes from the February 7th, 2019 meeting on page three. Mr. Jones, you said you had a comment. Yes, I have a comment on page six. We're, uh, it's about halfway down, a little bit past halfway down the page. Uh, uh, the, I, I, the question I, in my mind that I asked uh, about, uh, we, we'd had an extensive conversation about variances, and I asked uh, Mr. Taub about his, what his industry standards were. That was how I thought I phrased the question came across some other way, but that was my intent with the desire to see what other communities and specifically the sign industry was doing on this matter. And so if it could, I think, reflect that, I would appreciate it. And Mr. Jones, just for clarification, that's industry standards for the signs, not specific to the variances, correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, in other words, his industry has to have, you know, they're moving into all sorts of problems and issues and whatever else and I just think that would be of great assistance to you staff wise and certainly to us uh, to uh, to find out what other 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 cities and what industry standards might be. Okay. be we'll make that correction. Thank you. And you have a misspell on uh, Mike Walker's comments. He speaks rather than spikes. <laughs> Bob I got one quick comment. Okay. At the beginning of uh, the top of page seven, it says Commissioner Zuber. What I was trying to say, uh, what I thought I said was that I felt this instance was too great of a variance, that I felt that variances should be used for more unique situations. Clarify that. Okay, did you get that, Dorothy? Okay. Any other amendments or comments? If not, I'll accept a motion. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Item number 3A consideration and final action. Drew. This is consideration and action on a final plat of Kerrville Crossing, subdivision containing 2.506 acres of land. Lot 1, Block 1, Evans edition. Kerrville, recorded in Volume 8, page 97, in flat records, Kerr County. To establish lots 1R and 2R, Block 1, to be address 1205 and 1201 Junction Highway. Make that flat before you here. Staff recommends approval, and I move for you. This came before us uh, months back. Something similar. This is trying to. I don't believe it came before the commission. Uh, we've been working with the applicant for some time on the replat and the development that's coming in on this property. Uh, but I don't believe we brought anything to the commission. I didn't see it. It's, it's it, another it, developer. I mean, like yeah. Several years ago, actually. It was, it was oh, just okay. a few years it's, ago. A few years ago, this, this was brought in. Um, how similar this is to the previous. Uh, I will point out um, 
one of the benefits uh, public, excuse me, just one sec. Find the mouse here. Uh, this is the current location of the street of Map Road. Right. This is the intersection, the, the main entrance of Walmart where the signal is. Okay. Um, so this little segment here you see is a demonstration of right away so that we can see the city and the developer can work with TxDOT to realign that And so the light really between between the existing Walmart entrance and the new one. The light will not move. We're okay. basically moving the connection to Nap Road to Junction Highway. Used to be able to turn left out of there. It used to be here, which was offset from that intersection. Right. And now aligning it with that intersection to be a full full use of the intersection. Okay. Of course, the bottom of Nap Road is the boat ramp and park there, so. Okay. Drew, it's hard for me to read on my printout and even on our, our screen here. It looks like there's some type of easement that is platted between these two lots. That's correct. What kind of easement is that? Martin, can you go ahead and pull up the PDF? Okay. There's some shared access and fire lanes to those two lots. As you can see, the lot on the west side does not have direct access with by curb cut to 27 or Knapp Road. Um, you can see it a little clearer on this one. Okay. Um, that curb cut will basically be here coming in on Knapp Road mm -hmm. and then allow the cross traffic basically along the property line and back out to another curb cut on Knapp Road. That's so, where that dotted line, you see the dotted mm -hmm. line's on? Yeah. Yeah, so fire lane and access easement okay uh, is evans insurance office still going to stay where our real estate is still going to stay where it is no that building is roughly this location here so they're they're in the process of demolishing demolishing that building right now this was this was a site as i recall a year or so ago that wanted to put in a 24-hour emergency clinic after the other one went, came in <clears throat> so what's the development that's going in? Uh, you want to see that? Sure. <clears throat> uh, Kevin Sprague, of Union Yard Consulting Engineers. And uh, we are the engineers on the project. And uh, we are, so we're handling all of the on site engineering as well as the uh, text dot. Uh, the middle is just being done. We are going through, we're finalizing the site plan process and the and construction document process, but I thought maybe, I only have one copy that I'm going to present this. Just to see. So we've got uh, Aspen Dental that's going in and a retail uh, development, and then also Raisin Canyon is going in on this. So that helps, Raisin you can pass that down, that yeah. helps show how the circulation works and why you have a fire lane and an yeah. access easement. Uh, what do you want to do? Is it? Is that just like I think that slopes down? Doesn't that fall off to the river, that back side of the property? Yes. Yeah. So that's all. Even though that's so, what that is is that's just parking, so the parking circulation, you know, goes around, right? And then, okay. and then we just slope it off. Uh, just like everything else, we're having to raise that up out of the hundred flood plain. Yes, sir. And then it just slopes off. And you will be above the hundred year. You have to be. So, yeah. Mr. Waller. I, yes, sir. I have a question. Um, I believe that there's a restaurant pad in consideration for use of this property. Is yes. That? Here. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're we're on this. Oh, let, well, yeah, we'll send the plat back down to you. It's okay. Uh, the restaurant pad will be the eastern property. The western property is a one or two tenant building. So here's the raisin can. Okay. Aspen Dental and Retail in the back. Okay. You got the drive. Yes. Okay. Oh, my, my concern was the location of the restaurant uh, in reference to the shoreline of, of Nimitz Lake. Um, I was a little bit concerned about runoff, but it, apparently there's there's some 
land and some dirt between the uh, the lake and the uh, proposed restaurant pad. Yeah, I think that'll come in the permitting process, planning yes. approval process. Um, and we've got about, you know, we do we do rock rip wrap that comes off to, to filter things out, and then we've got about, oh, about 200 feet before we get to the end of the water that's all grass. So yeah. it's a lot more distance. My my reason for my <clears throat> my question was when I was with UGRA, we started requiring all food service uh, businesses that were developed in that area to do a, a drainage catchment basis. Uh, we let a lot of other, that's back when UGRA controlled the lake, we let a lot of other go in there you know, historically in the past. But but their driveway and their pavement, uh, their impervious cover, for a better term, I guess, was <coughs> in very close proximity to the, the development of the shoreline mm -hmm. of the lake. So, uh, but I, I'm satisfied with what you, I mean, I don't see the need for retention basin unless unless somebody who looks at it hydrologically and decides that maybe there's a need for it. But I don't have a further question. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'll accept a motion for final action. I'll make a motion for final action. I have a motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a second. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 4A uh, public hearing consideration and action. Thank you, Chairman. This is public. Public hearing, consideration, and action to recommend an ordinance to change the zoning from Gateway to District 23N on approximately 4.09 acres under Patrick Fleming Survey number 436. Abstract number 145 within the city of Kerrville, commonly known as 211 Easy Street. Property is consistent with the comprehensive plan, uh, or excuse me, this area is not specifically studied with the comprehensive plan. Um, this is outside of the gateway catalyst area. Uh, the current zoning is not in compliant or is not consistent with the previous comprehensive plan either. The gateway zoning was applied to a large area between I, along I-10 and um, City Lake or Highway 16. This area was included. Uh, you guys recently approved the PD across the street, across Easy Street and Leslie Drive. Um, this request is consistent with the current zoning standards going to 23 uh, which is in that little part of Kerrville. We have a PD across the street um, to the east is Lake PD where the Lowe's Home Improvement. Uh, to the south is Gateway which is currently multifamily residential. To the west is Gateway housing and a septic we have as you can see the management table is highlighted here uh, yellow shows the different land uses between gateway and lake 23 the white ones of course are the same and then the blue highlights uses that were permitted by right in gateway and we have a conditional use in lake 23 there's leslie drive which will be the connection for the easy street. Here you guys can get about close as any kind of connection. Uh, typical two lane divided highway with center turn lane. However, in constrained areas such as this, you can see they're undivided. Uh, it's the, the main access to the, or the only access to the easy street. Staff recommends approval, and I'd be pleased to answer your questions.
help his son and his fur, I think a mix of uh, certain smaller contractor businesses, residential. Right. But it says uh, retail, no retail except on a limited and conditional use basis. Retail trade one is limit or re retail trade one is conditional use. Limited is what does that mean? Uh, Rebecca, uh, there's an attachment C here that was uh, presented with this. Can you comment on that? Do you have that? And it's up to you if you want to read it or not, or just summarize it. It's from Ken Wilson with Wilson Asset Management, um, an email to the Development Services Department. Uh, part owner of Northridge Village Duplex Apartments, the president and management company therefore. Apartments comprise of 56 units at 516 Bryan, contiguous to this property. This is the main contaminated stone gateway to the we are in favor of the proposed development and requesting following provisions. Uh, one, that the hours of construction be limited. And two, the development provide a screening and sound crew. Um, of course, I'm not getting the rest of this into the record, but uh, it would be in our case file as far as permit record. Uh, the only comment I would have from staff standpoint is we don't typically apply conditions to zone cases. Okay. Um, unless there's a conditional use permit that's in review for the planned development district. Um, so we're not recommending any conditions. <coughs> the city of Phoenix is not currently having a construction curfew, and our current screening requirements in the zoning code would apply, uh, which would be a six-foot screening fence along the property line between these two properties. So yeah. it's not specific to, say, a sound barrier. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this does require public hearing. I'll open the public hearing at 448. Anybody wishing to uh, make any comments in this regard, approach the podium. Give us your name and address, please. Uh, seeing none, hearing none, public hearing closed at 449. Uh, comments? Drew? Yes. Where's the nearest end point of three to this property? Is it? Like we're getting, and then I guess it's to the west, but I'm not sure how close it actually is. The zoning code review committee, I'm sure, is going to review this area in detail because it needs a lot of work, it looks like to me. Yes, sir. Um, as far as the code review committee, um, what they're going through is, is the draft zoning code. Uh, they are still going to use the home map just to view the home district. Um, so at some point, the north south, east, west, and central districts will go away uh, to a more simplified version. Uh, going through a process right now to try and compare existing land uses and a comparison table of permitted uses as they correlate between the current districts and the future districts, um, just so that citizens can study that and look at see this property zone gateway or this property zone 23N, what is the proposed zoning with the new zoning map and how does that impact the, the permitted uses um, so that's going to have to be lot by lot study um, the consultants also putting together a map uh, illustrating the potential non-conforming properties uh, and staffs going through to try and identify which of those are already non-conforming um, and how does that <coughs> play in with the comprehensive plan um, so that would be obviously important to this property owner moving forward upon the timing of their development um, and we've talked through that with them as far as their process but they still want to go through the zoning process now it looks like the gateway property adjacent to this would almost fit into the 23 in the residential i believe that's correct it's would, there would still allow multifamily. Multi-family dwelling is permitted in 23N also. Other comments? I tend to agree. I, I feel that 
this property's a little far away from Highway 16 and Signe Baker to be considered a gateway property. And so, you know, to be consistent with some of our other, with the plan development district and some other decisions along Leslie Drive, it makes sense to me to to get away from the gateway zoning to a 23 and better than doing a PD mm -hmm. right at this present time. For inclusion. If there's no other comments, I'll accept the motion. I move that we approve the zoning change request. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. And it passes 5-0. Thank you. Uh, 4B, Drew. For the public hearing, consideration, and action for the city of Kerrville to annex into its incorporated limits with the zoning classification of public and institutional district. <clears throat> a portion of an approximate 35.05 acre tract of land out of the S. Wallace Survey, number 114. Abstract number 348 and the S. Wallace Survey number 113, Abstract 347. Said portion of the tract located within Kerr County, Texas, and the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city of Kerrville. Consisting of the property generally located adjacent to State Highway Loop 534, the portion of the tract that is located within the city limits, currently zoned E25 <coughs> and residential cluster zoning districts and said zoning to be proposed and amended as a PI district. As far as the annexation process, uh, we recommend that it come before the Planning and Zoning Commission as a recommendation for annexation and a recommendation for the zoning <coughs> be tied in with that annexation. Uh, this map's a little busy, um, but if you get the mouse up here. to follow along you see the, the colored square or rectangle here is zoned E25 this portion down here is zoned RC that colored area is actually currently in the city limits the solid red line is the tract of land that the school district um, had purchased um, and you can see those kind of L shape on the southwest side it's outside the city limits and this north corner that's outside the city limits. So the annexation is not as large as that 35 acres, but the overall property is 35 acres. <clears throat> that is consistent with the Kerrville 2050 comprehensive plan. This catalyst area, the catalyst, is, the main catalyst is Tybee High School, and of course the future development along 534, the middle school coming in, uh, just to kind of reinforce that uh, school campus area. Here's a list of uses on the E25 and the RC district and moving into the PI district. I'll point out in the E25, the primary school is permitted. The secondary school is actually a conditional use. So without the zoning process, they would have had to gone through a conditional use process. Um, whereas the PI district, public and institutional, primary and secondary schools are both permitted uses. So we eliminate that extra step for the district. The adjacent properties, of course, you can see many of them are outside the city limits surrounding the property. Um, and then to the what, or to the, to the east, um, is Tybee High School and the adjacent property north of that. Here's some pictures of the property currently. And the Economic In Investment Corporation is working on a proposal to City Council um, to extend the portion of Olympic Drive. <clears throat> Working with EIC and the school district, Olympic Drive dead ends right around here at the end of uh, that adjacent neighborhood uh, with uh, Singing Wind Park here and that drive will continue. You can see that cleared out section of land there. That drive will continue to the existing light in front of the high school. So there will be a controlled intersection for both the high school and the middle school. I think that stretch of the new Olympic, proposed Olympic, has had five hydrants in place for That's years. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know when that was done, but the city did acquire that right-of-way. Yep. Um, 
from Shriner University Foundation and installed those water lines. Uh, and that puts the school on a collector and of course the thoroughfare being 534 as an arterial. Staff recommends for your approval and I'd be pleased to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. And that's go ahead and open the public hearing. I open a public hearing at 456. Anybody wishing to comment, approach the podium, uh, give us your name and address, please. Hey, hearing none or seeing none, close the public hearing at 457. Uh, commissioners? Am I reading it correct that there is a portion of on the other side of the highway that's E26 that's Yes, that's school correct. property. Okay, maybe the review committee can clean that up too. Then. Maybe we'll make notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doctor Pouse, do you want to say anything at all? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Oh, he like, oh, he like you. <laughs> give, give us some ammunition. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we. Approve the annexation and the zoning classification of PI for this property. Okay, we have a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. And I have a second. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes 5 0. And I will note the public hearings for the annexation process uh, will go to council in April. Um, this case will go through the zoning and ordinance readings. Um, into May. Okay. So we're finalizing this towards the end of May. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't number 4C has been postponed um, to possibly the April time frame, April, May. Excuse me, the May, May meeting. Uh, May. We won't be able to meet our posting and advertising requirements for the April meeting. Okay. Um, the, the seniors are working with HEB and their consultants. Um, through the conditions that were recommended, they're going to take a look at those and come back to us. Okay. I don't remember 14, Drew. Excuse me, I'm going to ask you. 4D is a public hearing, consideration, and action to recommend an ordinance to change the zoning from single family residential district in Guadalupe River District to the Guadalupe River District on approximately 10.06 acres. Out of the Thornton F. Aulis survey, number 143, abstract number 181 within the city of Kerrville, Kerr County, Texas, more commonly known as 100 Concho. As you can see on the map here, this property is currently split zoning between R1 and Guadalupe River. Uh, they're just wanting the entire property to be one zoning district, Guadalupe River. It is consistent with the Kerrville 2050 comprehensive plan as the property and the surrounding area are located in strategic catalyst area number two, which is anchored by Peterson Hospital, um, enhancing key medical assets while avoiding flood prone development within the priority area. Allowable place types being estate neighborhood, preservation neighborhood, and transitional residential, professional services, entertainment mixed use, agriculture, and outdoor tourism. And here you can see the list of uses allowed in the Guadalupe River District uh, many of those consistent with the place types in the catalyst area. Uh, Drew, I had one question. You reference uh, Peterson Hospital. State Hospital. Should that be the state hospital? The catalyst area is actually quite a bit larger than that. Okay. Um, so Peterson was kind of the center focus. Um, state Hospital obviously is within it's that more closest catalyst to this. area. Okay. Yes, and that's directly across the street. Uh, here in this location. Okay. Uh, this requires public hearing as well. I open the public hearing at 5 o'clock. Anybody wishing to uh, address this? Approach the podium <clears throat> and give us your name and address, please, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Harvey Brinkman, 821 Earl Garrett. I'm one of the property owners, but my question is with the review committee not coming forward my big question is to the I guess staff and future staff that you know do nothing's been planned for this area really yet 
it's just a review committee just trying to get to a point where they can understand this 47 zoning districts we have. Is that, I mean, it probably won't change GR a lot, I wouldn't think. The current draft of the zoning code actually does not have a Guadalupe River zoning district, um, but rather it's going to have a Guadalupe River overlay, <clears throat> which will have the additional development requirements um, specific to protecting the river and let the kind of simple form zoning districts um, identify the land use throughout the corridor of the Guadalupe River. Okay, so if this land use <coughs> approved the big Guadalupe River uh, district, uh, but still be subject to any new parameters under the new zoning? Yeah, it'll, it'll be a, um, have a new zoning district applied to it. Uh, I don't know what this area is on the new zoning map. Uh, that's something the consultants are reviewing right now. Um, so I don't have a, a firm answer for you right now as what the future zoning would be. Um, but rather than have a separate district kind of isolated along the river corridor, uh, the committee recommended a, an overlay along the entire river corridor. So the, the base zoning district is more consistent to the area with the overlay offering protections to the river. I guess my question would be, how would the new zoning affect this piece of property? It's going to depend on which district is applied to that. Um, so we can certainly work with Mr. Harvard, Mr. Brinkman and um, his investors to see what that recommendation is going to be. Um, and there will be some adjusting to that map as we bring that forward because it will be a proposed zoning map for the entire city. Okay. Um, so there will be certainly a number of changes obviously going from 49 districts down to 17. Um, but again, we're consultants are working on kind of a comparison table to look at those land uses. Well, that takes care of my question, but I mean, I, I'm happy the review committee is going on. I mean, I'm extremely happy as a real estate broker and someone that's been involved in this community for a while and seen how poorly our existing system works. And, <laughs> Hopefully, we can do this without a lot of naysaying and such. But, and I'm willing to work with the city on this property. We look at it like what, like Granger McDonald looks at his property and his 60 acres that he has further out on Thompson. And this is an extremely important area for Kerrville because on the south side of the river, we don't have the sun in the evenings. Right. And, uh, we just want a hotel over here someday. <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all. Okay, thank you. Can, can, can you bring those two charts back up between yes, the sir. two? Yeah, our district's, it's, it's mainly a commercial district, right? That's correct. So its characteristic would be that, would be more commercial or? Right. Um, so what, Consultants are looking at some based on the character of the existing districts and then also based on the character of the existing land uses as they're looking through those kind of two prong comparison. What is the appropriate new district to apply to certain areas? Um, so, looking at the current permitted uses, how does that fit into the commercial districts? They've broken out to C1, C2, and C3. Um, so, looking to see which would be the most consistent application on that moving forward. Does that answer your question? I'm probably not helping my case by getting back <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, uh, I, this is probably the prettiest river in Kerrville in the city limits or probably within a five or six mile area because this was all owned by the state. And our group purchased it from the state at, a, at an auction, I believe, was it 10 years ago, eight, nine, 10 years? And down below, the, the cypress tree is 80, 90 feet tall, but you know, when you stand on that bluff, you're kind of right above them. And uh, we got about an 80 foot drop, I think, on that hill. And anytime you want to go get 10 degrees cooler, call me. And we'll walk <laughs> down. <laughs> but you, but you, you don't own that. Just, down the river. The PD, the section that's marked PD. Uh, PD. 
Well, I'm sorry, I got the other. No, I'm no, no, sir. That's on the other side. That's the other side. Yeah, that's uh, the other side. I think that's Dieter. Mm -hmm. That's Dieter Center. Yeah, yeah. That's coming off Dieter. Okay. Oh, so it looks yes, like the river runs. Yeah, right. the river's right through here. Okay. okay. All right. Not. not uh, Again, part of Cowboy Group. The house that's on there was the, the home for the administrator for the hospital during different times and over the years. And we do have it leased, it's a residential lease. And I know this changes the zoning for that, but. Hopefully, I'm grandfathered for a while after, you know, or until if they move out, I may not have to, I may have a business move in. And we also have a blinking light at Shepherd Reese right now. Mm -hmm. And we've talked to Text Dot in the past, when Mike Coward was here, about potential of a traffic light there that would control this whole property. That's the stop sign at Shepherd Reese. Yes. But a, There's a hazard light. Yeah, a hazard, hazard or whatever. It just is yeah. not like above. It's We're putting in another traffic light eventually, but I mean, uh, we were told the cost and we haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And anybody else to speak at the public hearing? Uh, hearing none, seeing none. I was a public hearing at 507. Commissioners, comments? I mean, it seems to make sense to get one piece of property under one zoning classification and uh, Guadalupe River or GR zoning for this piece of property seems appropriate to me. I'll accept a motion. I move that we accept the uh, rezoning classification as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, right hand. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Uh, number five, staff report. Um, start with another action item for you guys. Um, our normal schedule puts our July meeting on July 4th. That won't work. That's kind of what we thought. I <laughs> uh, wanted to throw some options to the commission. Uh, we could either move it back to July 11th or July 18th, which would be a normal kind of workshop meeting. Um, obviously, assuming we have any cases coming through at that time, uh, that'll be right around um, in the mix of our zoning adoption and kind of wrapping that up this summer. Um, I don't know that we'll be that far yet. We may still have some cases and certainly may have plaques and some other business items, but wanted to get the commission's input on July 11th or July 18th with the closure. Uh, if if it's possible to combine it into, you know, one meeting on July 18th, I think I'd prefer that. We could do that. I agree. Makes sense. Sounds good. The only, the only thing I could see coming up that would derail that is if we had a public hearing for the new zoning code. We might want to keep those separate just for keeping the meetings pretty clear. But mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that final schedule yet. See if um, you could work around that. <laughs> yeah, it, it will be back. More than anything, we just want to be able to give customers our deadline so that they know what to expect moving forward through the process. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. For the record, I will be out of the country uh, from July the 11th to July the 18th. So uh, whatever window you choose, you will not be blessed with my presence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any other business uh, for the commission? And just a quick update. Um, Council asked staff and the committee to bring the sign code earlier up into the process. Um, so our code review committee is going to dig into the sign code at their May meeting. Um, obviously not going to have a resolution at that meeting, but that way they can start reviewing the sign code um, along with some of the other development regulations, getting into some of the overlays, looking at the zoning map, and those comparison charts that we've been talking about um, through that process moving that forward and then we'll schedule after that we'll be scheduling our open house for the new zoning code um, for the public engagement public input okay thank you that's it any other business if not we're adjourned <laughs>